A reading from the book of Sirach. To keep the law is a great oblation, and he who observes the commandment sacrifices a peace offering. In the works of charity, one offers fine flour, and when he gives alms, he presents his sacrifice of praise. To refrain from evil pleases the Lord, and to avoid injustice is an atonement. Appear not before the Lord empty-handed, for all that you offer is a fulfillment of the precepts. The just one's offering enriches the altar and rises as a sweet odor before the Most High. Just one sacrifice is most pleasing, nor will it ever be for forgotten. In a generous spirit, pay homage to the Lord. Be not sparing of free will's gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance and pay your tithes with a spirit of joy. Give to the Most High as he has given to you, generously, according to your means. For the Lord is the one who always repays and he will give back to you sevenfold. But offer no bribes, these he does not accept. Trust not in the sacrifice of the fruits of extortion, for he is the God of justice who knows no favorites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, To the upright I will show the saving power of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Hear my people and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. God, your God, am I. Not for your sacrifice do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice and fulfill your vows to the Most High. That he offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Good morning. It is Tuesday, May 25th. The gospel is from Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is letting them know that Yes, you may have given up a lot, but much is coming back to you. You've given up, but much will be given back to you. In another place in the gospel, remember, good measure will be poured into the fold of your garment, rich and overflowing. The human heart is that place, that repository of grace and love that God gives each and every one of us. It is from there that we embrace the world, is it not? It's from there that we embrace mothers and fathers and sons and daughters. It is from this special place that our lives and our heart and the kingdom of God grow richer because we draw people nearer. Again, this is what Pentecost is all about. Pentecost is the, the sending forth. It is the people of God knowing they're empowered by the Holy Spirit and so are you and I, my friends. Christ is not asking us to give anything up for the sake of the gospel, but to enrich what we already have through the words and the meaning of the gospel. You know the parables. I've said this a thousand times. You know the Good Samaritan. You know forgiving 70 times seven. You know the prodigal son. You know the woman at the well and all the rest. We know what we have to do. Now we have to do it, and it is in the doing of it that we are richly rewarded. And there is no favoritism. What does he say at the end? The last shall be first, the first shall be last. You never know who's going to move to the head of the line. That's why we have to be careful about judgment. We must be very careful that we do not judge because we do not know the hearts and minds of the people we love. 
there can be more good in people that might, might not go to church much or might not seem to be too well schooled in the gospel. They might possess more good in their heart than someone who sits in that pew every single Sunday. We cannot know, and that's the warning at the end of the gospel, some who are first will be last and some who are last will be first. We do not know. But I would really like to know that I would be first because I would like to know that I possess the truth that is Christ in my heart and in yours as well. Take care, my friends. We'll see you tomorrow. And now, my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs>